needle felted hairy Havanese dog with awesome eyebrows. How did we make this? Let's find out. Hey, it's Pam Duthie and it's a Thursday so it must be another needle felting tutorial. Every Thursday I make videos just like this so if this is something you're interested in don't forget to come back every Thursday. So today we're having a look at how I made this delightfully fluffy Havanese dog. This is just showing how I added all the fur to a basic dog body. So if you haven't already, check out my videos on how to create a muzzle and how to create a body. And to this basic body shape, I just added the fur. Now, before you're going to add fur to any sculpture, it's really important that you make sure that your basic body of your dog is very firmly felted because the tighter all the fibers are knotted together when you're felting through in from your loose fiber what's going to be the hair when you're felting through it's basically hitting more fibers for every stab you get better felting bang for your buck and more chances of the hair being really securely felted in i will say when you're making long hair sculptures it's impossible for every single hair to be bedded in perfectly you do the best job that you can but if they get mistreated the hairs will f will get pulled out if someone decided to try and comb it the hairs will get pulled out if you're looking to groom a long haired sculpture like this one you want either a blunt needle like a darning needle just to gently move the fibres into place you can use your finger or your fingernail or closed scissors you can just move the fibres where you want them and trim anyway and trim away any strays but of course you don't want to trim too much because they're not going to grow back if you mess up but anyway, let's see how I made this dog. So what we're going to need to start here is to cut ourselves some strips of the fleece we want for the tail colour. Now this dog's black and white, so cutting out loads of strips of fairly long, it's about an inch length bits of black and similar length bits of white. This dog seems to have a mainly black tail but with a white tip and a white stripe down the back. It's quite unusual. Um, so working on this. So to start with the very tip of most dogs tails if, if they've got any white colouring in them the tip of the tail is likely to be white. So I'm just taking a piece fanning it out and then placing the bottom of that right around the tip of the tail and felting in so I've got about a couple of millimetres of fibres that I'm felting into the, the tip of the tail so that holds and then leaving the, le the rest to run free, to roam free over the top of the tail and now I'm going to work on this thin stripe of white down the back. So with a very thin piece just felting that right into the back again with that couple of millimetres for it to grab and we're going to finish the rest of the that wrap in black so just adding a small amount wrapping it round but being careful not to overlap with the white bit because we want the white and the black to be separate not blending into each other. Exactly the same making sure that I've got a couple of millimetres that I'm felting into the actual tail and felting as much as I possibly can. Just making the tail itself takes about half an hour and as you can see when you get a close up at the end I'm felting right through the tail and this is bringing some fibres you can see them poking out the other end as little spots of black and that's not a problem because it's going to be covered with so much fur so this way it's just making sure that everything's so well embedded in and then another tiny strip of white and finishing up wrapping around with black um, exactly the same as before making sure that it's nice and firmly felted and we're going to do three layers of this a little bit of white and then finishing the wrap round with a bit of black and there we have a bushy tail with a white stripe going down the black going down the back and then just looking for a piece to wrap around. Now the rest of the tail is going to be all in black and this near the bottom it's a little bit easier to do the front half and the back half of the tail separately rather than trying to go all the way around. So just doing one side then the other and making sure they're felted well in again just with the base and 
it's much easier when you're doing long hair to work on doing a small amount first you know doing lots of thin layers than trying to do big thick chunky layers but how thickly you do the layers depends on the breed of the dog and how dense the coat but basically we've got about four or five layers working down the tail of this dog and it gives a nice fluffy exceptionally bushy tail and then while they're they're wired they can go into quite indignant positions and I'm just working down from the tail just by overlapping ever so slightly so that you can't see any white bits and I'm felting in again that few millimeters getting it nice and firmly felted so the loose hair is held firmly by it being rooted in with those bottom millimeters and then just slightly different here because the fur is a little bit longer than I want for this section I'm overlapping but then just felting up it's a good centimeter up from the bottom and then folding those bits and embedding them firmly this just makes sure the fur at the bottom is really firmly embedded as well going up the legs a little bit with this as well so felt in a good section a good line and then folding over the free ends underneath and felting them in this way it's extra firmly embedded in there's lots of different methods you can put in the fur um, some just make it more firmly felted than others and this just makes a nice densely felted area on his tummy and also you can if you if you use thinner layers you can felt down that center and then fold them over and felt just a millimeter in to hold it in place this just is the exact thing it just means you put on sort of half as much fur as you need because it's going to double over and it will still be just as firmly felted in because you've kind of felted it twice once as you go along the line to hold it in place and then once you fold it you're felting in again at that area all different methods just to make it a little bit easier to felt the fur in and along the underside of the dog we're felting felting in the direction that you want the fur to be going so it's felting back the way as you can see so all the fibers all the fur the long fur is pointing towards the tail end of the dog so when you're making a dog just look at which way the fur lies and you're putting the fur in in this direction and it's a good six or seven layers to get the underside of the dog done and as you'll see this makes a nice dense coat it's, it's actually quite lovely and soft again this depends on the fibers you're using obviously um this is a black dyed merino i try and use as cruelty free uh, products as i can so it's a non muled merino and as this little dog has white little paws here we're just doing similar to what we were doing on the tail and the body i'm taking a piece wrap it fanning it out and wrapping it around the legs and then i'm felting on sort of halfway in the middle of this piece that i've just stuck on and making sure this is really firmly felted in place it's quite fiddly to do this to start with make sure that you're felting between your fingers and being really careful not to hurt yourself and then felting these fibers back down so you've got a double layer pointing towards the feet his feet are nicely covered basically so just making sure that you're felting in about a millimeter down from where the fold line is so these bits are kind of doubly felted in and felt 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 again at this point we're over an hour into adding the fiber onto the dog take your time there's no shortcuts with this it really should take a long time to embed all the fibers because every single one is being individually attached by your felting needle so you've got to make sure and try and catch every one at the same time being careful of your fingers i find at this point that a stabbing cushion just gets in the way um okay so i've done both the back feet with just this single layer he's starting to look a bit like the chinese crested dog this is the exact same method i used to put the fur onto the chinese crested dog's paws um we're doing the same onto the front paws as well but the the back legs are mainly black with just a little bit of white the front legs are a lot more white so 
I'm adding pieces and now that I've got the thickness down at the pores I'm just making it a bit easier for myself and instead of folding back the layers I'm just embedding in you know felting that good centimeter of ends closest to the skin I'm felting that into the dog and this just makes it a little less fiddly when you're starting to get up towards the body it can be fiddly to be folding back the fibers on something on this scale so felt in all the way up that leg making sure everything's as firmly felted as possible and that is the most important thing of making the long fibers making sure everything's as embedded in as you possibly can and then i'm doing the exact same thing to the second leg because both the white both the front legs are white and the back legs have a little tuft of white at the bottom and then they're black all the rest of the way up so there's these front legs done nice and fluffy now you're going to need a lot more fibre than you think you need so you're just wanting to cut cut some bits to the lengths you think you need and just keep coming back cut more and cut more it takes quite a bit of fibre to get a nice fuzzy body for the dog so for the back paws just well the back legs we're just doing the same as what we did to the front legs but now in black fiber and this is where that extra overlap rather than folding the bits over but just having tails that are a good almost a centimeter in length this also helps with the shading on the dog because i did him a white body underneath because he's the two different colors if i was a bit too wispy with the coat then you would see white poking through so the overlap not only gives you extra area to stab it on and make it more secure but it also hides up some of the white so taking a piece of fiber fanning it out to the thinness that you want and then felting it on with a good overlap of quite a few millimeters being felted into the body the back legs are a little bit more fiddly obviously because of the shape of the legs so sometimes it's easier to do a section at a time rather than wrapping all the way around the leg you just do a little bit and then add some more and it's going to take a good six or seven layers to work right up his body as you can see like the less rest of it better to do lots of thin layers than trying to do one great big thick well several great big thick layers the finer it is the more natural it starts to look and always looking at the breed and the dog that that you're creating some dogs have longer hair some have thicker hair if it's very dense then you would be looking to do a lot of the the folding over the fiber rather than felting it into the body and just lots and lots of fairly dense rows but this it's it's a long but not massively dense fleece on this dog so this is where i'm doing why i'm doing the layers pointing down the way and as you can see it's hundreds of stabs to embed this nicely into the dog yeah, and then working on the other other leg getting that done exactly the same way so the back white tips on the bottom and then black leg and as you can see sometimes your fibers even in nice tops are not quite as nicely lined up as you might want so you might not get you might you might have to discard some layers but that's that's okay you can keep them for felting as make yourself a kind of core wool out of the discarded bits now we're just working on the side of the dog so felting a small strip over the hips and then a strip along the side of his body again i've got a good two to three millimeters that i'm working on felting right into the dog so felt the line where you want it embedded into the fibers and then slightly fold over some of that that free end to felt it nicely and firmly into the body again make sure this is so firmly felted because the sides is where it could suffer a bit of wear and tear a bit of a tug so again sort of diagonally over the hip and then straight across the body for strips of fleece 
it's going to take several to get across the body. If it was a less fluffy dog and a more kind of silky dog, then you could felt more like how I did in my Highland cow in my needle felting long hair video, where you just take the one layer of fleece and felt it right along the center parting of the dog. And this gives a nice long silky coat, but this dog's a bit more fuzzy. He's got a bit of body to his coat. So building up a few layers so that we get a bit of thickness there. And I'm stopping just behind the front legs because they're, they're a little white in, in this dog. But if it was different colors, you might be going from here almost all the way around the neck, depending on the coloring of the dog. To put a full coat on a small dog like this can take anything from about three to six hours, making sure that you felt really firmly in place. So don't rush this process. Just like anything with felting, stick a movie on, watch what you're doing, obviously be careful, but set yourself some time. It's a time consuming process because there are no shortcuts. You are embedding in every single individual hair to give a lovely soft coat and it's um you can use all sorts of fibers for this top coat as well if it's a more silky dog there's um beautiful mulberry silks or i've used um silky bamboo fibers these all give lovely coat fibers for the dog as i said already this is a black merino fiber it's non-mules because i try and be as cruelty free as i can um obviously not not vegan but um um what i found though with the blacks is the way they're dyed possibly i tend to find that the the fiber becomes quite soft and might be quite easy to to felt in with itself if you kind of play around with it too much so this is another reason why i start with the back of the dog and then move on to the f move on to the face is i'm trying to touch what's already felted in as little as possible so it's easier just to be touching the bottom of the legs and I have in a light as light a touch as possible if you started on the face of the dog then while you're working on on the back of it you would ruin what you did on the face as you can see we've been working up several layers on the back of the dog and then starting to work up his neck with just the exact same method fan out some fibers pop them on felt them in, in place so a little bit of a montage here a little bit of speeded up of me felting this all in and going right up the back of the neck and right over the top of the head again and now onto the face of the dog because at this point i'm now basically just holding on the bits of the dog for holding the head where it's not got long hair felted in and because it's a black eye in a black dog for us to be able to actually see the eye better i'm just popping in some white under his eye and the actual dog that I was felting does have a little bit of white showing under his eye so this worked perfectly it gives a nice bit of definition and then we're just building up he has a lovely white chest so just exactly what we did on the back of the dog fanning out sections and felting that last millimeter or two into the body of the dog and just making sure it's really secure and going up again it's going to be four or five layers to get up the neck of the dog don't try and rush it the finer layers look so much more realistic so it's a little area felted in and then a load of loose fibers and i'm just getting up the side of his neck that i didn't catch when i was doing up the back of his neck that's in black and a little bit of it comes over just above his leg so i'm just felting this in up and underneath his ears a tiny bit although this probably won't be seen too much in the final piece i just want to make sure this is all covered because it's easier to felt it just now than worry about it it later once you've got all the fibers on the rest of the dog
and bringing this fibre forward a little bit as well because most of his face is black it's just his very muzzle that's the white and as always doing the exact same on the other side up several layers up his other side of his face and then diving in with some more white again and filling in the rest of his chest um, now the way I make the small dogs their heads aren't wired you can still get a little bit of movement if you need to get in under his chin lift his head up a bit but um, this it seems to be working as as it is so I haven't had to deform him too much and now we're doing a similar thing going up under his chin here this keeps a nice smooth line for this keeps a nice smooth line for his fur going up his neck and then onto his muzzle and we'll come back and do a bit of this a bit more of this later on as well but so now popping onto his ear he has a small amount of white on his ear and the rest is black so a longish strand of white i'm just felting this in towards the bottom of both of his ears at the bottom and towards the front and as you can see just being really careful of my fingers you could pop the ear onto a felting cushion here if you're a bit nervous of felting up into the air but i just find it easier to be doing my my danger felting as people call it and then felting the line from where we've just put in the white just along his ear just uh, so making sure this is as firm as you possibly can this bit's pretty fiddly because you've just got a really thin piece of felt that you've made you've just got the thin ear to felt it into so you've just got to look at move the angle of the needle about so you're catching as many fibers as you can so doing a second layer here with a little bit of white and then a load of black and I'm slightly overlapping the black from the white because the white's not all that prominent it's just kind of peeking through and then we're adding a couple of more layers of black working up the ear to give him nice full ears because he is quite a delightfully hairy dog and then we felted the ears down slightly because they do stick up a little bit when I first made them because I want to be able to get in all about them felt underneath and everything but then once you've got the fibers on you do want to start kind of encouraging it down the way so he doesn't look quite so crazy so now again fanning out this little bit of black to the thickness we want and making the the center really fanning it out so the center's more together and the edges are more fanned out and this is the top of his head and just covering down covering the top of the ears as well and again it's a bit easier to felt this all in place because all the fibers are together more towards the center than when they're all span spanned out all over the place but felting in as much as you need and then we're going to work up the side of his cheeks again slightly under the eyes and the side of his cheeks adding on the fibers here in in layers um, again just looking at the breed of the dog some are more hairy in the face some are a little more smooth but just adding what's needed for the breed as always in fine layers working your way up rather than in big chunky layers getting some in below his eyes as well but making sure not to cover that bit of white that glint of white that's just going to show his eyes up in all that blackness and once that's firmly in place we're going to head back to the other side and do the same again a couple of layers here for his cheek and his under eye area and this is the stage the dog really starts to look quite a bit crazy at this stage but don't worry they go through crazy phases and remember you can always trim any fibers if you've gone a bit too crazy at this point you can groom a little bit you can trim so you're not you're not finished with this crazy look yet when you when you embed in fibers you're not stuck with it and if you go wrong it is possible with a bit of brute force 
to pull out any fibers that you're not happy with. If you don't like what you've done, it's not ruined. Good bit of force and you can pull out some fibers and start over again in that area. So now we're working some more above the eyes and it's basically, it's just continuing what we did up the cheeks. Just with the hair pointing in the down direction, we're working on felting sort of up and over the eyes in little layers at a time. And always keeping an eye on what you think of what's happening to the back of the head as well. Some dogs have quite fluffy tops of the head and some are a bit smoother so adding fibers as you need it there to the top so so i felt that i needed a bit a bit extra here to give a little more height to his hairdo and like i said we do need plenty of wool don't don't stint on your wool you're going to need a fair bit um so now adding in small chunks and it can be easier when you take off a small bit like this, when you pull it up and then just roll the, the bottom in between your fingers so you get a tight edge so it's easier to felt in. And now we're going to make these crazy eyebrows. for So pinching off sec small sections, rolling the top between my fingers to bring all the fibres together and leaving the bottom deep flowing. And all you're going to do in a few sections is take this bottom piece and felt it in above his eyes. And then the next piece is going to be felted in just slightly further round where his eyes are. Now always remembering what you do on one side to do on the other if the markings are symmetrical. So felting in above both eyes, making sure this is really deeply embedded. And then with your next section, see how that's just up and around, just further around the eye. And this just gives his eyebrows slightly covering his eyes a little bit and causing them to, to stick up slightly and just makes them quite striking. I think the contrasting color of eyebrows just really finishes off the dog and makes him look super cute. Well, it will do when we're finished. Just now he looks super bonkers. I'm not going to lie there. He is pretty crazy looking, but it's quite a distinctive looking dog. So again, just embedding this in slightly, following the curve of the eyes, so up and further round. And as you can see, you've got now the longer piece goes down and it's like a shorter piece for the second that you've put in and then I'm doing the same over the top with some black keeping the white separate but this just adds some more bulk to his eyebrows and this is following in the shape of how his facial hair grows so following around the eyes and then starting to come down the center of the front of the head and in between the eyebrows and as you can see, you can gently sculpt out the fibres, fan them out a little bit as they are on the real dog. A little bit coming down the bridge of the nose and just felting underneath the eyebrow slightly. This just gives a little definition here and actually almost made it look like he had an, a little eyelid on top the way that worked out. And then you can sculpt where you want the fibres to be by ever so gently just a couple of stabs with a needle gathers them and holds them in place for a little bit of grooming. Now I said we'd come back to this muzzle. This is the fiddliest bit. Everything else of the dog is done. So this is the bit where it all comes together and finally makes him look like what you want him to look like. So working some more layers up his chin until we're totally filled up the underside of his muzzle because this is quite a, a bearded dog and you're following the curve of the nose round and this tapers off the fibres, gives him a nice smooth haircut. And then with your last pieces they're pretty much just flat on the end of the nose coming down onto his chin but the, he's got plenty of bulk there because you've added all this behind the chin. Don't stint with putting on the bits that won't necessarily be seen because they hold out the bits in front. They give it body and strength. 
and now we're looking at the sides of his nose exactly the same as what we did on his body um, because this dog it seems his his moustache he, he almost has a double moustache down the side and then the bits on top so I'm popping in longer fibres down the side of his muzzle and this is making a bit of a moustache and again making sure I, I can't say it enough making sure they're really firmly felted in and what a strange expression he seems to have just now but don't worry this is the point where it all starts to come together suddenly after looking utterly crazy for quite a while and now I'm felting in some fibers onto the top of his muzzle so what I do for that is hold them in place at the length I want them to be and just felt in the overlap over the top of his muzzle making sure to felt this in nice and securely and felting round the sides of his muzzle as much as I need to for the fibres to sit in the direction I want them to sit in so if you want this more pointing down the way then you felt round this quite a lot so that you're almost felting over the top of what you just did down the side and this has the hair pointing down the way but some breeds stick out a bit more so you're almost just felting just on the very top of the muzzle and now the final parts we're making his nose which is just a roll of black which are felt between two fingers and a thumb and because this breed has quite a triangular looking nose when you pinch between the two fingers and the thumb you get a sort of triangular shape unfortunately my wicked camera skills here mean you can't quite see it but when it starts to firm up I hold into that shape and it gives me a slight triangle and we're just going to felt it on the end of his nose with the point of the triangle facing down and just you can manipulate the shape a bit as you work it onto the end of his nose and you can see just magically sticking the nose on starts to bring the dog together and he doesn't look quite as bonkers and then the final thing is a tiny roll just take a couple of fibers of black roll them between your fingers to make a thread and felt it on under the nose to make his mouth and turning the ends up slightly to give him a smile um, and pretty much just a little bit of grooming and there you're done so the grooming is just gently moving the fibers with a needle and then just a little tiny felt to lock them in place just stabbing the needle in slightly and that holds some fibers in place and then folding his tail over because they have this lovely curl in their tail checking him all over you can give him a wee trim if anything needs trimmed smooth out everything but pretty much that's him done thank you so much for joining me if you make a Havanese dog like this or any breed at all I would love to see them don't forget come along to Pam's Felting Friends in Facebook there's links in the description down below I would love to see your work let me know what your favorite breed of dog is and come back every Thursday don't forget click on my wee face to subscribe and check out the playlist of the how to make a dog, the armatures and the head shapes. Thank you so much for joining me. See you next week.